mind for your patience. And we'll get started in just one moment. All right, so hello, and, and thank you for joining us. And welcome finally to this presentation, which is part of an ongoing Goose webinar series uh, exploring issues and projects associated with global uh, sustained ocean observing. My name is Albert Fisher. I'm the director of the Global Ocean Observing System Program Office based here at the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. I'll be moderating today. And for the next hour, we'll start with uh, approximately a 30-minute presentation from Giovanni Capini. Giovanni is the chair of the Mediterranean Operational Network for the Global Ocean Observing System, or MONGOOSE, which is one of our 13 GOOSE regional alliances. And he's based at the CMCC in Lecce in Italy. So today he'll be talking about Mediterranean operational oceanography in support of sea situational awareness services, a very services-oriented uh, focus. After Giovanni's presentation, we'll conduct a question and answer session. Uh, by chat, I'll be moderating and, uh, and ask the questions verbally. The chat window is already open on your screen, as you can see. And so if you'd like to start asking clarifying questions, please go ahead. Uh, the session is being recorded. And we'll cut the recording to just this operational portion of it. And a link to the recording will be posted on the Goose webpage. So Giovanni, I'll turn it over to you. And if you can, turn your camera on so people can see you. Sorry. Yeah. Camera is on. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. And thanks for inviting me for this webinar. Uh, I will be pleased to introduce you to Mongoose, the Mediterranean Oceanography Network for Goose. And uh, I will uh, then introduce Copernicus uh, uh, as uh, in, in, the, in the framework of the Mediterranean services, and then some example of applications. Um, so that's uh, yeah. So uh, one important aspect I want to uh, to highlight in the introduction, uh, what I think is a um, specific for the uh, operational oceanography domain is that uh, we are trying to answer to scientific challenges but especially also to environmental and uh, societal challenges with uh, an important focus towards the user uh, or uh, user needs so i'd say is a user-centered uh, application in which innovation serves to uh, through research to um, solve uh, societal and uh, uh, environmental and, uh, and scientific challenges. Uh, so we always keep in mind, that those are only examples, but we always keep in mind that uh, our research is oriented towards uh, either uh, tackling environmental problems or solving uh, uh, emergency or emerging uh, uh, issues along the coast and uh, uh, in the ocean. And here you, you can see some of the examples uh, of a domain in which we uh, develop as a community, of course, not only our institute, uh, we, we develop services. Uh, uh, in the framework of GOOS, uh, we are uh, uh, we have get organized in the Mediterranean since early late 90, uh, uh, early 2000, uh, developing uh, uh, a network of institute that uh, deals with the operational oceanography, and we are we have been recognized a few years ago uh, uh, ago as uh, the GOOS Regional Alliance for the Mediterranean. So you can see the website of Mongoose. Uh, and uh, what are the objectives of Mongoose? The first one is to coordinate, let's say, operational oceanography efforts in the Mediterranean Sea with a focus on the services. Uh, in, so uh, as a specific objective, of course, we need to improve continuously. So it's, it, we have a very strong link between the science and the services. So we need to continuously advance in scientific understanding and technological development uh, uh, of the services that are uh, delivered then by the community. Uh, we need to increase the awareness and of course GOOS play an important role in this uh, and uh, uh, so promoting the visibility and increase the awareness uh, of the governmental agency but also of uh, the general stakeholders. 
to do that, one very important uh, issue is to increase the capacity of downstreaming, so to develop uh, applications that are useful for society and uh, policy makers and, uh, uh, and uh, users. And uh, finally, of course, um, this is not a European effort only, it's an international effort, and uh, in the Mediterranean it looks to EU and, uh, and uh, non-EU countries with a, a very uh, important focus to African uh, countries. Uh, we are trying to enlarge our community, but that is already uh, quite uh, uh, large. We are counting 20, 35 partners in the Mongoose, uh, still with gaps, especially in the African countries, but we are enlarging to, uh, this, this year Egypt uh, uh, re-entered, let's say, the, the, the framework, and we are uh, discussing with Algeria and Tunisia to, to have them joining. And, uh, and all the European nations, of course, are part of the, the Mongols. These are institutes, so they are not, is not a governmental uh, institution, it's a, 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 let's say, a group of uh, a research institute, but also um, uh, operational uh, agencies, and uh, we also open uh, to associate partners uh, that are private. So we have a private company that wants to stay close to us. Uh, they are called associate members, and they can, uh, let's say, benefit, and, uh, and vice versa, Mongoose partners can benefit of this interaction with private sector. In this context of Mongoose, let's say in the last 15 years, we have developed the uh, first MyOcean and then Copernicus service for the Mediterranean Sea. So as you know, Copernicus uh, is uh, nowadays an operational service. It's divided in uh, uh, thematic assembling center uh, for data and uh, uh, monitoring and forecasting services center for the uh, forecasting and, and analysis for the path. So, uh, I will talk about a bit, introduce you to the, um, in, uh, to the Mediterranean component that is both for the in situ part, so of course in collaboration also with other projects like uh, Emodnet uh, and uh, the other Eurogoose initiative. Uh, we are contributing uh, as a community to the, to the collection, but especially in the, in the framework of Copernicus, the delivery and the quality assurance of the in situ data. Uh, this is an example of uh, uh, what you can get through Mongoose, uh, but is also corresponding uh, uh, um, for almost uh, all, all the data to what is available uh, operationally in Copernicus, in the in-situ tag of Copernicus. And here you have an example of, uh, from the Mongoose website, uh, what we call data center, accessible from the Mongoose website. Uh, 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 it's an overview of the different uh, platforms from gliders to SVT and, uh, and Argo and uh, Drifters. Uh, as well, the Mongoose community is contributing uh, uh, to Copernicus uh, 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 satellite remote sensing observing system for the delivery of uh, chlorophyll and uh, SST. So all the in-situ component uh, data and uh, the satellite data are available for free through Copernicus, and I think this is, uh, of course, worldwide, but uh, I'm presenting the Mediterranean component. What about the forecasting system? So the forecasting system are not thematic, are geographically divided in Copernicus. So here you can see the uh, different regions uh, uh, from the Arctic to the, uh, let's say, Mediterranean and global ocean, and uh, uh, in the, so this is what uh, is organized in Copernicus, so the uh, uh, coordinated effort of delivery, the, the ocean forecasting for the, diff for the global ocean and the different regions. Uh, as far as it concerns the Mediterranean, we are leading the, uh, what is called Mediterranean Monitoring and Forecasting Center, together with other uh, Italian and Greek partners. The system has started last year in May, so one year ago, to deliver operation on the service within Copernicus. And uh, of course, it's again uh, user-based. So here I want to show that uh, even the basic data like the model forecast or reanalysis are designed in Copernicus, uh, taking into account the user need. Uh, uh, of course, there is a limit. For instance, we are increasing the resolution of the model, uh, both in vertical and in horizontal, to better serve to, to to increase the accuracy. So, to better serve, uh, for instance, the engineering coastal community. As well, we are uh, 
uh, now, uh, by the way, today starting to deliver the, the V2 service uh, of uh, the system that will include a long 60-year reanalysis for the Mediterranean Sea. And of course, this uh, is very important for climate issues uh, as well as fishery. So you see the system is designed and is developed uh, to serve the different uh, user requirements. Uh, it is not a scientific, it is not only a scientific effort, it is also an operational services. This very uh, <laughs> schematic slides show you the different component and responsibility of uh, the Copernicus Siemens uh, uh, Mediterranean Forecasting System in which you see that uh, we have a set of what is called production unit, PU, that are uh, all backup so if one production unit goes down for any technical problem, the, 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 there is in another place uh, the, an identical production unit that is delivering uh, the same service so that there is no discontinuity in, in the service for the users. As well, we are developing the backup of uh, the service that is uh, delivering the data. Uh, you see that uh, in the future we will have also the uh, WAVES production unit that will be more clear in a few slides, so that is the new service that will be added in Copernicus. So what are the, the products? Uh, the first important product of the Copernicus MedMFC is the physical ocean uh, modeling that consists of two specific products. One is the, the physics analysis and forecast, so every day uh, we release the previous day's analysis or simulation and the next 10 days forecast for currents, temperatures, salinity, so the physical variables. As well, every year we release a new updated reanalysis uh, of either the last 30 years or today we are releasing the last 60 years of reanalysis for the Mediterranean Sea, uh, either daily or monthly mean, uh, depending on the product. So very important for climate issues. The new product will come and will be a revolution, uh, uh, the wave product, meaning that this wave product will be uh, finally uh, released for free as all the Copernicus products. So uh, wave forecast and uh, uh, simulations for the past will be available for uh, any exploitation, scientific and commercial. This will happen in V3 of Copernicus that will be in one year time because this is a new product developing Copernicus. It was not uh, in included in my ocean. Uh, last but very important is the biogeochemical uh, modeling products. Uh, is uh, both operational and uh, reanalysis. Uh, and it consists of a 10 days forecast uh, every uh, twice a week and uh, reanalysis updated uh, uh, every year. Uh, so these are examples of uh, uh, sea surface temperature model from the model products, uh, ocean currents, uh, and uh, biogeochemistry. The effort is distributed. For instance, the, the biogeochemistry is done by OGS in Copernicus, and uh, uh, the, the physics uh, uh, is done by AMGV, and the CMCC is then coordinating. But you, the user doesn't see this uh, uh, distributed uh, effort. The user uh, is taking... Uh, the products directly from the Copernicus website uh, with uh, interoperability is considered so all the products are in NetCDF and uh, easy to use and there are many training uh, sessions organized by Copernicus in the different uh, um, European states. Uh, then what's Mongoose link with that? I mean Copernicus has been developing Mongoose but then Copernicus is also used by Mongoose community in the sense that we are downscaling, uh, and you see there are many models. Here is a, a, an example, a very complicated, I'd say, a slide that show how many models are nested in uh, within Copernicus system, uh, the Mediterranean Copernicus, uh, uh, to uh, provide a higher resolution forecast for uh, the ocean dynamics in the different coastal regions. So here you have a map with many different models, most of them operationally run by Mongoose partners. Why, uh, so why this is done is because you need to increase the resolution towards the cost to better solve uh, uh, coastal issues. So uh, 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 we are approaching, let's say, the downstream issue. Here you see that the Copernicus uh, data on the left of this slide are used together with the meteorological forecast mainly 
provided by ECNWA or National Meteorological Institutes or uh, agencies. Uh, Mongoose uh, partners downscaling, uh, so it's mainly a national effort. These are two examples of the many models we saw in the previous slide, downscaling to higher resolution, and then partners uh, developing application. Uh, we like to call it C situational awareness application. So application in this case uh, that are dealing with maritime safety, environmental safety, so that uh, provide information and tools for increase the awareness of the people uh, working at sea and navigating and so on. And uh, I will show you now a few examples of this application. Uh, to do that, uh, I will try to, if I'm able, to share my screen. No, I don't know how to do that. Can uh, Foster help me for sharing? Foster, can, can you help me in sharing this? Ah, lovely. So I will show you a video and... Uh, let's see if it's working. I hope it's properly working. So we see your screen, Giovanni. You see it? Do you hear the mute, the, the voice? No, so we see some pretty images, um, but no audio. You don't you don't hear the voice. Do you hear the voice of the of the video? No. No. Then uh, forget. <laughs> Sorry for that. No, unfortunately, we don't. Uh, I think the bandwidth of yeah. this. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Then don't worry. I will show you. Apologize. Uh, Can Foster put back the presentation? You actually need to uh, get. You need to release control. Okay. Stop. Stop sharing. An option yeah. to stop sharing. Yeah. Done. I'll put the slides back up now. Thanks. Thanks. I'll post a link to the YouTube. Uh, video for you to look later. Sorry for this. Okay, so what are the... Um, so first of all, just to highlight again uh, the effort of downscaling. Downscaling is very important because it will allow us to go operationally for casting and analyzing the, and modeling the the ocean in the very high resolution uh, in the coastal areas. These are example of what we are doing at CMCC for the Italian, uh, some of the Italian seas in the southern Adriatic, northern Ionian, in which we are developing uh, models uh, uh, that goes uh, to 10 meters of resolution, so a few meters of resolution, and of course are essential for the um, uh, storm surge forecasting, for instance. Uh, and uh, I'm now presenting the CMCC application, but of course in Mongoose uh, we have many applications from uh, the other part partners from uh, Spain to Cyprus or Israel. So, but I'm, I'm providing you some specific example. Uh, so increase the resolution is important to go to the harbor and coastal areas. And then uh, uh, the other application I wanted to present is uh, uh, what we call sea condition is a, 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 a web portal uh, that is also available on the mobile application and uh, allow the user to uh, access uh, um, uh, both meteorological forecast and uh, ocean forecast on the Google platform so that uh, then uh, we have developed the capability of uh, visualizing properly the, the forecast 
and zooming for instance it, it's very important so that the user can really go and look to the details of the different uh, oceanographic structures so we have now more than 100,000 download of the web application and we are also exploiting let's say uh, market uh, uh, and commercial issues uh, so here you see the zoom capability Another important application we have developed for the search and rescue, uh, for the Coast Guard is search and rescue. This is an example of an accident, a uh, uh, terrible accident occurring uh, uh, two years ago in, uh, in the southern Adriatic Sea, in, uh, in, uh, where when one big ferry from Greece to Italy uh, uh, got fire and uh, uh, we were providing a search and rescue application. You can find this application, it's called Ocean Sar on the web freely available so uh, people can run uh, through the user interface uh, a simulation identifying the last known position and then uh, uh, an area of a most probable uh, search for, for, for in this case mainly Coast Guard. Um, uh, another application that has been developed is the uh, ship routing. So for instance ship routing is now using wave forecast and is optimizing the route. Here in this slide you see uh, the um, shortest path, that is the red path, and uh, an example of the, 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 um, the result of the software, that is called VSEER, that has calculated the optimal path, that is the black line, that appear longer, but the user will get to the final destination at the same time, so sailing, uh, navigating in a, a more calm area. Uh, so this application is is taking is calculating is taking into account the evolution in time and space of the wave forecast to optimize the route. And this is now developed also in the Atlantis project for the Atlantic for. Uh, uh, for further, I would say, uh, uh, enlarging the area. Now it's working operationally in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, oil spill forecasting is uh, uh, another important uh, framework for uh, uh, our application. We have developed uh, in many different projects, and now we have this tool uh, freely available on the web. It's called WeToil, and allow you, uh, the, the user, in this case mainly Coast Guard, but also Rempec, as you see, uh, to forecast the evolution uh, and dispersion of oil at sea. Uh, uh, of course, this is uh, one specific application, but again, it's very largely, is an effort la largely shared with the mongoose uh, in the different uh, project, uh, or even including a multimodal approach uh, that we have developed uh, within MEDES project. So, uh, just to uh, say what I wanted to give uh, you as a message is that uh, uh, all these uh, activities are nowadays uh, uh, included in the Goose uh, effort, uh, specifically in the Moon Goose uh, effort in the Mediterranean Sea. We need definitely to enlarge uh, uh, and uh, uh, give priority uh, to both the observing component and the, the modeling and the applications and try to involve as much as possible the African countries. Uh, thanks uh, uh, to the European effort, today we can uh, uh, make use uh, of the Copernicus Marine Service uh, for the Global Ocean and specifically for the Mediterranean Sea that we believe uh, is uh, increasingly uh, allowing the development of downstream application and uh, also uh, it's a, a new capability of uh, also for researcher and uh, um, uh, scientists to obtain a large amount of data state of the data to, to, to study the dynamics of the Mediterranean Sea 
end of the uh, Mediterranean ecosystem. And, Thank uh, you very much, Giovanni. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to uh, speak to us. Sorry that the video didn't work. We'll share the YouTube link to the video so that people can look at it afterwards. So let me uh, thank the audience and let them know that the chat window has just disappeared. So we'll open the chat window for you to be able to ask questions. And um, to kick off things off, I'll get I'll ask a few questions of my of my own. Um, so. You have a very user-centered focus, as you mentioned, uh, but you're coming from the, the research and the uh, operational oceanography research uh, community. You talked in one of your slides, you t I think it was a slide looking at um, Copernicus, you had a lot of uh, user requirements analysis. You had a breakdown by sector. One of the sectors was research. How were those user requirements set? What was the process to identify those? In one of the slides, I think it was a slide from Copernicus, you had a lot of user requirements analysis to break down by sector and by sector of research. How were those user requirements set? How were you set? Well, Copernicus uh, has gone through, I would say, tens of uh, what they call user workshops. And that's one one uh, one activity very important. So Copernicus and before Mayosin has uh, uh, meet the user mainly uh, every year, I'd say, since the last uh, ten years probably. And this is a way of uh, discussing, presenting, and discussing with the users uh, the, um, the the products, uh, presenting the products, and uh, highlighting the requirements. Mm. So that's one way. The other way we are trying to exploit in the uh, in many projects today, but we started, I'd say, in uh, in 2008, is to try to engage the users within the research project or research and industrial project. Uh, for instance, in the case of a Medes project, that was an oil spill dedicated project in the Mongoose framework, we had both Rempec and many Coast Guard uh, together with us in within the project so it's a, it's a, and nowadays uh, many uh, uh, projects are taking the same approach to to in, engage and involve users not only as, as an advisory board but okay. really as part of the um Tom Gross has a question he said that you mentioned you have two production units to guard against interruptions so are you actually operational 24/7 with um, the staff that isn't 24/7 or do you um, the question he brings example from NOAA from the US where he designed services and products together with the users and I like very much this concept of a, a laboratory that is a let's say uh, in which researcher industry and uh, users uh, works together to develop the service No, the the system is organized. Uh, yeah. No, and you showed um, the the models that you use in the in the Mediterranean. You have the Copernicus model for the whole entire Mediterranean. You have some downscaling models. How do you validate them at the coast? The coast the coast lies one of the major places where you're providing services. I presume. So there is a. Uh, redundancy, but is uh, office time uh, engaged, so there is not uh, uh, availability during the night or in the weekend. But basically, with the backup uh, uh, automatically set up, you will ensure the service is provided 24/7. Yes, so with no interruption. Yeah, well, validation goes through the comparison of the model with the in situ and satellite data. So the effort, let's say, that goes uh, uh, 
uh, mongoose in the Mediterranean is really to keep together the community that is doing the observing system with the community that is doing the modeling, also through the techniques that uh, are data simulation. So validation is one of the most important uh, uh, effort that mongoose is taking uh, on board, and uh, and it goes through the comparison uh, of. Um, the different models, so a multi-model. Let's come back to a minute for your mechanisms for user feedback. You talked about in projects involving the users from the very beginning. Have those projects led to um, sustainable structures where you continue to have that dialogue with the user and as you're improving your service? ...to provide uh, reasonable and accurate information, for instance, uh, for oil spill or search and rescue. So. The, is not only the, the the temperature accuracy or the current accuracy, but also how this uh, resolution and the uh, quality of the model it's enough for the different applications. Let's come back for a minute for your mechanisms for user feedback. You talked about in projects involving the users from the very beginning. Have those projects led to um, sustainable structures where you continue to have that dialogue with the user and as you're improving the uh, Yes, uh, of course it's, uh, it's not straightforward, but yes, that's the, uh, I'd say a successful way we are trying to, um, to exploit is the one for ice field. Uh, so we, we, we have set up a, a multimodal system in the Mediterranean Sea that is called MEDES. Uh, so Mediterranean for maritime safety is a multimodal approach. So it's like ten different models uh, and few uh, oil spill models, oceanographic models, all running operationally uh, together and interoperable. So that uh, different uh, oil spill models will can run with different uh, oceanographic and uh, meteorological forecasting. Now uh, we are we have two way we have an. Uh, uh, Two approach. Let's say we have an agreement with Rempec in which we are uh, on based on the best effort providing uh, the information to Rempec. So we have an institutional agreement between uh, uh, providers and the users. And on the other side, we are uh, uh, working with EMSA for connecting the oil spill model towards the clean net. Uh, still, uh, but still, the service is based. And in your your first slide, you show, or one of your first slides, you showed uh, the wide range of potential users of the ocean forecast and the ocean observing system. How many of those are really the? Which ones of those are the strongest users? Does that vary from country to country, as you mentioned in the example with Spain? Facilitating this passage, of course. Uh, uh, the, uh, on the national basis... The so you listed quite a few different types uh, of users. Uh, so, um, in the, one of your early slides, uh, fisheries users, uh, oil spill, oil spill um, coast guard, rescue basis, waves at the coast. Which of those are the strongest drivers in Mongoose, and does it vary a lot between countries? Can you repeat the second part of the question? So you listed quite a few different types of users. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which of those are the strongest drivers in Mongoose, and does it vary a lot? Well, the the the. The strongest, I, uh, it started to be uh, the the part related to oil spill. So I'd say Coast Guard, Rempec, and Demsa. Uh, uh, then, uh, so the institutional component, I think, in the past was the one of the main driver, like also UNEP map, and uh, but then uh, I'd say in the last uh, five years. There was an increased uh, uh, demand from the commercial uh, uh, sector uh, as well the industrial sector that are more and more used uh, using the let's say the Copernicus data and uh, as well the uh, requiring a specific application. I think uh, 
there is a variability in the different countries because the awareness also is totally different. So we need in Mongoose, we are trying to also through projects, of course, to increase the awareness of of the data availability and of the of the application availability. Last, I think uh, that uh, uh, it's very promising is uh, a, a new approach to really provide services to uh, the, the, the market uh, consumer uh, oriented uh, market. So meaning uh, uh, to, to citizens, uh, citizens and uh, uh, people working at sea like fishermen or so not no more the institutional component, but really the wide uh, consumer uh, sectors. Uh, and the sea conditions, the one I showed you, uh, is also exploiting what we call a commercial uh, uh, effort. So let's, let's continue on the theme of awareness a little bit. You mentioned it as one of the main um, goals of uh, Mongoose. Uh, How, again, does that work very differently from country to country, or is there a common approach across all the Mongoose uh, institutions about raising awareness? 10,000 of users, then you're really uh, starting to 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 to, to reach uh, a wide community, but it's very um, there is many differences between country and countries. I, I think, and there is large uh, potential for uh, further exploitation. Well, uh, raising awareness, I think uh, we have done it mainly through project-based efforts. So there is a, a diversity from country to country because the participation uh, we have done a lot within MEDES, a lot of workshop uh, uh, within national projects. Uh, for instance, as in Italy, we have done many through Interreg and uh, Italian projects. We have done a uh, uh, large effort. We have started as a community to attend uh, uh, um, exhibition like uh, the the spill uh, the, 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 the I don't remember interspill uh, uh, exhibition or oceanology. So to start to present the the, the data and the, um, uh, and the products to to the users. Uh, um, I'd say it's. Is still uh, uh, um, an area in which we need to increase our capacity. Uh, we are trying to do that through uh, research and application projects, uh, and uh, but uh, I think we need a more coordinated effort. But it's not easy to 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 do it in a coordinated uh, manner because uh, uh, it's project based, so there is not any institutional funding to do that of course there is for instance the uh, so you showed some of these apps that are getting to sort of final end users um what kind of feedback do you get from them can you tell us maybe about one of the most surprising uses you've heard about from motion forecasting data the other coordinated effort i would say is the copernicus one that is trying to um, do uh, to do nation by nation uh, uh, training and uh, user workshop to uh, present both Copernicus products uh, products and uh, um, added value products as a best effort best uh, a examples. Well, the, the most exciting uh, activity we are doing here at CMCC is with uh, sailors, with uh, and uh, so they are uh, they 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 get very excited, for instance, to be able to use uh, uh, during race also the information on ocean currents that were not basically available in the past year because either too complicated to visualize or to exploit or not accurate enough 
and uh, on the other side, uh, uh, so these excited users like the sailors then uh, get back to you with uh, uh, very important challenges. So so ask you imagine that some of the sailing race uh, occur in a few miles field, so very limited no, area. Go ahead. And then uh, it means that you need so high resolution forecast for that uh, for to serve that uh, kind of application. Maybe a couple ocean and atmosphere models. So very challenging. And uh, so that's uh, th that's the benefit I see and our community see in really working with the users. So you you test your products and then you get the uh, challenges back <laughs> for the future uh, research. The other I think. Uh, uh, very uh, important. Sorry. Go ahead, Albert. No, the other very important uh, and uh, fascinating uh, uh, challenge is the one related to search and rescue because it, it's very uh, scientifically and technically is very uh, difficult to uh, properly forecast uh, because you need the high resolution, you need uh, to launch maybe a drifter uh, during the emergency. So it's quite challenges. And on the other side- With the downscaling, you showed many different models that are used uh, across the Mediterranean. The are they common models or are they different from region to region? And within Mongoose, do you work in a common way on developing those models and validating them? Of uh, uh, immigrants uh, uh, from uh, Africa and the, uh, uh, and uh, the other countries, I think, is very important in the Mediterranean that we, we keep on with this effort uh, in which we really are working with the users and, uh, and get uh, large, uh, I'd say, satisfaction and uh, in the positive feedbacks. With the downscaling, you said many different models that are used across the Mediterranean. Are they common models or are they different from region to region? Well, yes, there is uh, both, I'd say. There is a big effort in uh, co-developing uh, ocean models. There is the, the most important effort, uh, I'd say, is the NEMO consortium that is developing a common European ocean model. It's now used by Copernicus largely and then uh, by many other partners also for downscaling. That's one of the, of the efforts. Then, uh, let's say, Naturally, several uh, uh, coastal models has been developed in the past from uh, ROMs to, we are using Scheifem, there is another uh, FESM, the, the German model. So there are other different models. We are trying to uh, move as much as possible towards the concept of a community model. So you can have a population of different community models, but uh, the, the big effort is to have uh, a community model that is a uh, uh, sustained by a research institute, so they have an agreement. Uh, we have done it with Medslik, is a noise spill model. We have done it with Nemo, uh, of course, uh, as a European effort. Uh, we are doing it with the uh, Scheifem soon, uh, the coastal model. So the community model then is uh, a tool uh, with a certain degree of guarantee because we have the manual, the, the website for downloading uh, uh, the test cases, and so on. Uh, uh, from uh, the other, I mean, to, to get a, 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 a common effort on the modeling, uh, what, uh, what we have done in Mongoose is, uh, uh, and we have tested it in the oil spill framework, to develop an interoperable capability. So you can have uh, different uh, ocean models, but the important is that they, they are interoperable uh, uh, in respect to the application. So, uh, for instance, in Medes, now we are running, I think, 13 different uh, uh, you mentioned that in models with different resolution in different areas. But it, each of them can be run with different uh, uh, oil spills. Sorry, I keep interrupting as it's quite a long delay. Uh, so, it's hard to know what you're doing. In, 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 um, you mentioned that wave forecasts are soon coming on. and interoperable. Uh, uh, capability and this will allow the user to in many places uh, in the world it's met services that choose the most high resolution model if not available for any problem another lower resolution model so to make the system operational and robust and this also help a validation because of course when the model are interoperable then you can easily compare them to the to the data Thank you.
No, no, it's okay. There is a bit of delay we need to take it into account. You mentioned that wave forecast has changed from that. Yeah, yeah. Wave forecast, of course, is a standard product. I'd say in the past... Mm -hmm. That I think will be a revolution. It's a silent and uh, important revolution that is occurring. Uh, uh, the the uh, one of the aspects is that uh, this wave model uh, will be coupled with the ocean models in most of the cases, and these allow in service uh, delivery aspects. Do you have cooperation with the net services of the ocean for the currents of the ocean models as well? of the wave model. So that's the first uh, uh, good point in this process. Uh, the other point is the um, policy, the data policy, because in Copernicus is open and free. So it means that the uh, state-of-the-art wave model will be open and free, while up to now, unfortunately, the data policy uh, in most of the Met Office is not to provide the data open and free. So that will allow the users to exploit more applications. Yeah, uh, definitely. At least at the Italian level, we are working uh, through the exchange of data. And say, I would say in the Mongoose community, uh, there is a cooperation in France uh, uh, as well in Spain. Uh, and then uh, uh, I'd say also some of the uh, Northern European countries, as also uh, like uh, Norway or uh, UK, is also have even stronger cooperation in which the Met Office maybe does yep. the operational. Uh, you also mentioned that you have a biogeochemical production unit. What are the main users there? And is it moved beyond the research phase into more operational phase? I would say this didn't happen in the Med. In the Med, uh, most of the operational component of the oceanographic forecast remain. Uh, as a collaborative effort of the, like in Italy, Spain, uh, in France as well with the Mercator, of the oceanographic um, co community, but uh, with cooperation with the Met Office, strong cooperation, I'd say, as well with the CNWR. Uh, so the in the med uh, it was one of the first becoming operational in the in the myocean phase uh, including data simulation so OGS is running uh, within Copernicus uh, um, um, a biogeochemical model that is a community model so it's called biogeochemical flux model you can download from the web is uh, maintained by a consortium you can download it for free and uh, uh, so it, it uh, simulate the, the the basic component of the ecosystem from phytoplankton to zooplankton and nutrients uh, and uh, it's run operational so it's uh, it's run uh, every day while the forecast in the med is done twice a week uh, is mainly done twice a week uh, for, uh, let's say, for the moment being, uh, because the variability is not that high, and, uh, and uh, they, they assume or they demonstrate that is uh, uh, anyhow providing uh, reliable data for the forecast. It includes data simulation, and I've seen it used also for, for instance, from uh, uh, Italian uh, ISPRA, uh, environmental agency for the assessment in the marine strategy framework. So it's it's really an instrument uh, helpful uh, in the. You mentioned that you have cooperation with them, as well as uh, on the other side, uh, it uh, it will uh, please finish serve in the future. I think also for optimizing the the fishery practice. Uh, most of yeah, the I was just going to ask you. You mentioned the, that you have cooperation uh, with uh, Morocco and. The, Started your cooperation with uh, Egypt, and I just wondered what the major barriers to cooperation with the rest of the countries across the Mediterranean. Other observation or forecast.
So Diana, yes, you, I know that the med service in Croatia. Sorry, can you repeat? No, no, no. I was I was looking to the Dr. Klarić uh, comment. Well, I think is a, I think one of the aspects that has decreased the capability of cooperation was lack of funding of joint projects. So we didn't have uh, after a, a MFS step, we didn't have many projects in the Med that were involving also uh, African countries. Uh, it was an effort uh, carried out by Med Goose, uh, and I mean we are trying to keep it alive, but. Uh, you need resources to do projects together. Now we are trying with Morocco uh, and as well uh, um, other partners from Mongoose are trying um, for, for instance, for sea level uh, uh, measurement station to, to engage more uh, African partners. But uh, And then we've gone a little bit over the originally a lot of time, but since we started late, I'll push on with one last question. Uh, most of Goose is um, really concerned with the observations themselves. You showed the observations that are used and assimilated into the forecast systems originally. Um, do you do any work on the impact of the observations? Which observations do you think are the most critical ones for the physical forecast that you spent most of your time speaking to? But they are not specific other problems. I mean, we need the uh, dedicated projects to work together. So that's the main limitation that we don't have. Well, uh, sure, the, there is techniques like the ocean observing system uh, simulation experiments that are, uh, and you know, there are also uh, now doing them in Atlantis or uh, in other research projects. So these techniques are, let's say, assessing the uh, the capability uh, of the the impact of the observation into the into the modeling uh, system. Uh, I think let's say we discovered in the last years that glider observation have really positively impact the the uh, the model effort uh, the gliders. Uh, as well, uh, Argo uh, have significantly uh, improved the, the ocean uh, modeling and forecasting capability. Uh, then uh, we are trying to keep alive the XBT effort because uh, even if they are more, uh, so the uh, ship of opportunity effort, because even if they are more, uh, let's say, sporadic in, or limited in space uh, but we have uh, maintained in the med uh, uh, ship of opportunity for many years and of course repeat, repeating uh, the same track uh, uh, in time it impacted in, not in terms of coverage but in terms of uh, creating a, a time series uh, so it's not i mean uh, uh, say that uh, of course the coastal buoys uh, uh, are also very relevant and uh, as well the new radar system that we are trying to coordinate in the framework of Eurogoose and, Mang and Mongoose. Because uh, observation also are, uh, let's say, the impact of observation. Giovanni, thanks very much. I think I'll, I'll draw things to a close there. We've gone a little bit over the, the allotted time. Um, thanks again to you for participating and, and pushing through the technical difficulties, and thanks to the audience for participating. And uh, Goose so Webinar Series is a regular series, so please have a look on the ISC website and into your mail for the Goose update for the next webinar. Thanks very much, Giovanni. This would be done without the satellite uh, remote uh, sense observation, that, uh, and uh, we hope to, to benefit a lot from the next uh, Sentinel data that will be right. available soon uh, within Copernicus.